Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 21st of May 2017. Now starting in the news this week from the register, MP3 died and nobody noticed, key patents expire on the golden oldie tech. Well the register noticed and I took interest because the implications of this are that all Linux distros can now include the MP3 decoder without worrying about any patent disputes. So MP3 was developed by the Fraunhofer Institute back in the 90s. So all the patents are now expired. And Register mentioned a book here called Stephen Witt's How Music Got Free. And I have to say it is a very interesting read. Not only does it include the story about how music became pirated, but it includes the details of how MP3 is developed and how it failed. Yes, it failed. In that I believe it was um, Philips was pushing the MPEG-1 and MPEG-2 encoders uh, as a standard and really saying that MP3 was a failure. Money talks and they basically trampled all over MP3. Eventually the encoder was released for free on the internet and this was right about the time that music piracy was really starting to take off. I think you can guess what happened next but uh, yeah, with music piracy there was a need for portable MP3 players to which those companies legitimately paid to use the MP3 patents. So. In the end, MP3 was a success. All I can say is I wish there was a choice to buy FLAC files instead of MP3s because, well, the way the technology works, and they say it right here, it's called psychoacoustics to allow information to be thrown away. Audio is thrown away in the MP3, and that's how you compress the file. Anyway, moving along to the next story, good news. Open VPN fans, your software's only a little bit buggy. Two code reviews give crypto client a nearly clean bill of health. So this review was paid for by Private Internet Access, which uses the software. And I did start reading through the review, but it was a bit long and dry really. And to be honest, this is the second video re I've recorded today, and I've got to listen to some guy with a monotone voice wrap it on for ages. Oh wait, that's me, isn't it? Um, um, yeah, anyway, uh, looking at uh, some of the key points from this story. So the review turned up two bugs, CVE 2017-7478, the server can be hosed by a large control packet, and CVE, um, I think that's a typo there, because the year 2917 is quite a long way away. So yes, I think that's 2017-7479, a packet counter ID rollover can cause a denial of service. Both were fixed in versions 2.42 and 2.3.15 before the report landed. So as the report notes, vulnerabilities may crop up from the certain feature combinations. This will be an ongoing challenge for OpenVPN developers to catch these problems early as the code base continues to evolve and expand. KD Plasma 5.10 Beta has been released, and we can take a quick look at some of these features here. Panel Task Manager, uh, middle click mouse to group. Okay, I won't see that review because I use the icon only task manager. Folder view is the new default desktop. Oh no, it looks too much like Windows. Or I suppose you could say it looks too much like Android. In which case that's a plus, isn't it? Hmm. Well, it's quite easy to turn off, so I shall be turning mine off because I like a nice clean desktop. New features everywhere. Ooh. Media controls on lock screen. Ooh, very nice. Pause music on suspend. Clementine already does that. Software Center and Plasma Search on KRunner suggest to install non-installed apps. Well, there's quite a long list. I'm not going to read all that out in this video, but some nice new features to look forward to. When improved touchscreen support. Working for the future with Wayland. New Plymouth Bash screen selection. Well, I'm skipping through that, but as always, I'll leave a link to this story and all the others in the video description. Kwin Wayland's high DPI support for the high definition displays. The current world of high DPI works fine when dealing with a single monitor and only when dealing with modern apps, but it breaks down with multiple monitors. What we want to see a 4K screen and a peasant machine? What? What we need to render. Yeah, so two completely different sizes. So I take it they're referring to like a 4K screen and a 1080 screen. So this is something they're continuing to develop within the desktop, so nothing needs to be done by the application developers. So when is it going to happen? All Kwin code changes landed in time for Plasma 5.10, but dynamically changing the scaled screen exposed some problems elsewhere in the stack. 
therefore the main UI has been disabled till hopefully Plasma 5.11. I have to admit I'm probably still going to keep away from 4K screens for the time being. I'm going to look more at two 23 inch 1080 screens rather than a single 4K screen, in which case I'd be looking at something like a higher screen size. Now I think for what I want to do, two screens would suit my requirements a lot better. Some more news about WannaCrypt, and I think I've covered this already during the week, but just a quick point I want to mention. There was a kill switch domain discovered, but upon discovery, the predator-prey situation has caused evolution with the malware, or more like, the malware has been modified to ignore the kill switch domain. But the most recent strain I knew about fails to carry out the in file encryption properly. From Tech Republic, there's a new Raspberry Pi case that can turn your Raspberry Pi into a desktop computer. It's quite pricey though, the Pi desktop case costs £40 or $50 US dollars, well, I keep forgetting what the price of a Raspberry Pi is in America, but I know in the United Kingdom they retail for about £25 to £30, pounds, so that is more than the cost of a Raspberry Pi. But it can take a solid state drive, so the case offers most of what you need to build a Pi based PC. It includes a real time clock, an MSATA solid state drive interface, heatsink, and a power switch, with optional support for a camera. So the Pi desktop supports up to a 1TB hard drive. Now I was trying to think why the limitation on hard drive size is, but I think is one terabyte the largest two and a half inch drive you can buy? In which case I guess that stands to reason that it's the largest capacity of a two and a half inch drive rather than being a limitation on the data size. Anyway, that's an option if you want to use your Pi as a fully fledged desktop PC, which I have seen is quite possible assuming you get the right size power supply, which I failed to do when I tried out my demonstration. Although, I have to say, using Ubuntu Mate, it would have been usable as a desktop PC. So Ubuntu has been ranked as the second most used Internet of Tat, I mean Internet of Things OS, by the Eclipse Foundation. And I didn't see this coming, but Raspbian is the most used. But is that saying that Raspberry Pis are the most used Internet of Things devices? Maybe it is. Funny, that's not really what I would have considered them to be. I would have thought them to be a purpose-built, small, system-on-a-chip PC. But okay, let's say Raspberry Pis are used, then Raspbian is the most used. So at 45.5%, with Ubuntu and Ubuntu Core being 44%, Android being a distant third place. Funny how that's complete contrast to the mobile phone world. Anyway, I've just noticed those percentages don't add up, so what are they talking about? Good question. There's a new version of Elementary OS, Locky, being released, version 0.4.1. Did I review this? Mm, I can't remember. So notable updates include a significant upgrade to Epiphany, several fixes in files, a redesigned metadata sidebar for photos, new Bluetooth settings, a microphone indicator, and Bluetooth device controls in the sound indicator. Brightness slider in the power indicator, the ability to start an app center search from the applications menu, look and feel updates, better support the what's this? CJK input methods. Don't know. Better translations and more. So it isn't just a minor bug fix release with a few bumped packages, this includes a ton of new features which represent eight months of solid development work. From Torrent Freak, the Kodi add-on Navi X bites the dust after 10 years. I might have come across this add-on, I can't really remember now, but uh, I don't use Kodi in this method, so it wouldn't really have appealed to me. Uh, I'm not really going to go through this article, it was just a quick mention really that for anyone who uses the NaviX add-on. So I think because this is an open source add-on, it, it could be taken over by someone else. But the original developer is stepping away from the project. And finally, for this week's stupid news... Sophos waters down its NHS is totally protected by us boast. So this was the original screenshot in their website. The NHS is totally protected with Sophos. And it's been changed to Sophos understands the security needs of the NHS. Gee, I wonder why they changed that. So that was a week of Linux news. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. <laughs>